When I was studying for the MCAT, the big test you need to take before you get into medical school, I found it really hard to keep up with all the chemistry equations, physics formulas, and psychology terms that you need to know. What helped me eventually attain a 99th percentile score was Anki, and it's something I still use in medical school to this day. Today, I'm going to tell you all about it. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric, and I'm a first-year Canadian med school student. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how I use Anki in medical school. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, Anki is a spaced repetition flashcard app. Think of it like smart flashcards. Instead of just looking at the flashcards by yourself, Anki chooses which cards to show you and how often it shows you based on the ones you find most difficult. For example, the ones that you find more difficult, you'll see more often so that you get a better chance to memorize them. So now that we know roughly how Anki works, let's dive right into how I use it. So the very first thing you need with Anki is flashcards. You'll notice here that I have a few decks that I'm using right now. The first one, Anki, is what I'm using for med school. So knowledge about physiology, how the human body works, pathophysiology or diseases and how they progress, and pharmacology or how drugs work. The second one is something I'm using to learn clinical skills or what I'm going to be practicing once we get back in person. These are the moves that you actually perform on a patient. The third one is to improve my Chinese, just to brush up on my vocabulary and make sure that I don't forget too much of my mother tongue. And the last one is from learning anatomy. Again, another really important part of medical education. These flashcard decks are focused on different subjects and I found all of them online completely free. I'll talk about the benefits of making your own cards afterwards, but here let's focus on pre-made decks. The benefit of these decks is that they're really well made if you're finding the right deck. They're well written, concise, and very comprehensive. The best part is they save you a lot of time. So instead of making all those flashcards, you can spend that time towards studying. To recommend some fantastic decks for the MCAT, I would recommend PreMed 95 as well as Ortho 28. For the USMLE or medical school in general, there's a very well-known deck named Eng King or Zanki. To study Mandarin, I use one called Domino Chinese. I'll have links to all of these Anki decks in the description down below, so check them out if you're interested in any of them. So now that you have the decks, what do you do with them? Well, essentially, all you have to do to import them is go to the top left of the Anki application, click File, click Import, and choose the Anki deck that you are looking to import. It's really just as simple as that. So what I like to do if I don't have all the information in a pre-made deck is just fill in those gaps with some cards that I make myself. So let's try that right now with a test run. So if we go to the bottom of the screen, we can create a deck and let's call this YouTube tutorial. And then after we make the deck, we can see it comes up in our decks list. So if we click that, click add, and then this big pop-up will come up where you can make your own cards. So the very first thing you want to do at the top right is make sure that you're adding them to the right deck. There's nothing worse than making all these cards, being ready to study, and then realizing you put them in the wrong spot. Then at the left, you want to make sure that it's set to close, which is essentially like a fill in the blank type of flashcard. So I would recommend you use the normal set of clothes, but for this tutorial, I'm going to be using this special clothes, which I have from one of my add-ons. So the first thing I want to bring your attention to is the text box. This is where your main flashcard information is going to go. So let's just make up any flashcard. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Easy enough, right? To make a closed flashcard, you essentially choose whatever you want to hide and then click the close button at the top or use the keyboard shortcut control shift C. And you'll see now that the mitochondria is now in brackets and there's a C1 which stands for a close one. Now let's try adding that to our deck and then making another card. So let's do uh, the Taj Mahal is in India. So with this card, I want to show off two things. One, you can use the closed shortcut on two separate bits of information within the same text. So you can see here that India is C1 and Taj Mahal is C2. So close one and close two. So essentially what this means is now this information will produce two cards, one with Taj Mahal hidden and one with India hidden, and the other is showing. So in the card one, you wouldn't be able to see India, but you'd still be able to see Taj Mahal. And in the second card, you wouldn't be able to see Taj Mahal, but you would be able to see India. Another thing you can do is change it so that they're set to the same close so that it creates one card with multiple blanks. So the way we do that is just setting it to C1 for each. Another great function that I want to show is that you can add pictures. 
But here I'll just add in a little picture of the Taj Mahal, but that can be a diagram of the human body, of a flowchart, or anything that helps prompt your memory to what that thing is. So let's try adding that to our deck. And that's how you make a basic close card that you can use for Anki. So now that we have our cards, we can get to know how to use Anki for real. So here we only have two cards to work with, so we're not going to be learning a whole lot, but I just want to show you how it works. With our close cards, you have a fill in the blank. Here we have the blank is the powerhouse of the cell. So using Anki is just like a flashcard. Think about the answer and then hit spacebar and see if you got it right. So I think it might be mitochondria. And it is. And at the bottom, you can see there's three options. Again, good, and easy. I only use again and good because sometimes when you use easy too much, it can get pushed so far in advance in the future that you never really end up seeing the card that much. So if you don't know the card well, you hit again or one for the keyboard shortcut. Or if you know the card pretty well, you hit good or two for the keyboard shortcut. That's pretty much it. The rest is all about putting in the hours. So let's press good. We can see at the bottom, we'll see that card again in one day. And here, here's the other card we made with two closes. The blank is in blank. Uh, so this is an example of a not great card because there isn't really much to prompt you. But going off this picture, we can say maybe the Taj Mahal is in India. And there you go. So if we use good or again, good and again, we can see in one day. Or again, we can see it in 25 minutes. Now, the next thing I want to show you is the browse function. So sometimes with the pre-made deck, you can get hundreds, if not thousands, or ten thousands of cards. And it can be really overwhelming, especially if you don't really know where to begin. So my recommendation, I'll now show with the example deck we just made, is when you get your pre-made deck, just select all the cards with Control A or Command A, and then click Toggle Suspend. And essentially what that does is it takes all of those cards you suspend out of the pool of ones you can see, and now I would recommend using the search bar to search for the things that you're interested in learning or that you've already learned about so you can review. So let's say I have all the cards suspended. I want to learn about the Taj Mahal. And if you use the search bar, it can show you exactly all the cards that pertain to the Taj Mahal or any subject. And then you can select them and unsuspend them. So this way you're only learning about the things that are relevant to you and that you're ready to learn so that you're not getting bombarded with all these random facts. Next, I'll show you my Anki settings, and please feel free to copy it, change it, or do whatever you'd like with it. Absolutely your choice. So if you go to one of our decks, we can see a little icon on the right. If you click it and then click Options, you can see all of these settings you have for that deck. So here we have four tabs that are really important. New cards, reviews, lapses, and general. Starting with new cards, we'll go from the top down. Steps in minutes is referring to how long it will be in minutes between when you click again or good and when you see the card again. So for example, the 25 would mean if I click again, I would see that card in 25 minutes. And the 1440 would mean that if I click good, then I'll see that again in 1440 minutes or one day. Now again, I don't really use the easy button, so I don't have a third number for easy. Next going down. If we look at order, we can see that there's two options, show new cards in random order or show new cards in order added. Sometimes you add a lot of cards about one topic. So if you have all of them simultaneous one after the other, it can get a little boring and kind of take away from the point of learning. Uh, if you know one card and you're like, oh, okay. And the next one's about the same thing. You're like, oh yeah, it's the same thing. You kind of don't really take much away from it. So that's why I like to keep it and show new cards in random order. Next, new cards per day. That's really a personal thing, how much you can handle. Uh, personally, I do 100 cards. Graduating interval is essentially how much time they'll add on between when you see the cards. So let's say uh, from the first time I see a card, uh, it's one day, I'll see it tomorrow. And then if I press good on it the next day, uh, then I'll see it again in four days. And then the next time I press good, I'll see it again in seven days and 10 days and 13 days and math is hard and so on. And then the easy interval is essentially the same thing uh, with the easy button, which again, I don't really like to use because it pushes it way too far in advance. And then at the very bottom, I have a checkbox, very related new cards until the next day, which goes on to that similar topic of if you make a one card with multiple closes, it won't show all of those cards on the same day, but it'll space them out. That way you're not reviewing the exact same card with a few different blanks in the same day because you're just reviewing the same topic over and over again. Next, moving on to reviews. 
uh, it's really important that you always max out the number of reviews you can do. So here I put 9,999. And that's really important because of Anki's algorithm. It chooses when to show you cards. So if you reach your limit one day and you can't see all of the cards that you're supposed to do, it'll mess it up down the road. So to avoid that, we just set it to the absolute maximum. The easy bonus and interval modifier is the same thing about what I was talking about. Uh, again, don't really use them because I don't use the easy button. Maximum interval is how long you can go without seeing a single card. So I have it to 180 days or six months. So I've been learning a card for a while. The longest I'll go without um, seeing it is six days maximum. In terms of lapses, these are when you forget cards that you've already learned. So if I were to lapse a card and I click again on it, here in steps and minutes, I would see it in 30 minutes. Or if I click good on it, I would see it in, again, one day. And the new interval is essentially, you're kind of like resetting the card. So instead of all the progress you've made on it, you'll get 30% of that the next time you see it. So let's say uh, I would have normally seen a card in 10 days, but then I forgot it and I lapsed it. So now I'll see it in three days. The next thing I want to talk about is the leech threshold. So this is what happens when you forget a card four times or however many times you set it to. And I've set it to suspend the card and take it out of the pool if I'm forgetting it so often. Then lastly, the general tab. Uh, the only really important thing here that I want to bring your attention to is the first one, which you ignore answers longer than 90 seconds. So if you are going to take a bathroom break and get up and leave your computer, it's not going to mess up all your stats and cards that you've done for that day. So in terms of some pros and cons of Anki, uh, one of the pros is that they're really well-written cards and concise and comprehensive from a lot of the decks that you find that are pre-made online. They're also based on the best resources like Kaplan or the Princeton Review for MCAT or a lot of the USMLE study resources that are out there as well. Additionally, they're based on effective long-term studying strategies. If you're doing Anki for a long time, for months at a time, you'll find that you'll remember a lot of this information down the road. I've only been using Anki for medical school for a few months now, and I find that I'm already retaining a lot of the information a lot better than if I wasn't using Anki at all. Also, it really helps ground your studying in consistency. You have to do it every single day, so then you're kind of forced to sit down and do your Anki and keep up with the reviews that you have to do. In terms of some cons, you're missing the big picture sometimes. Anki is a way that you can memorize a lot of flashcards, but sometimes you also have to remember to tie that back to the big picture in order to make sense of some of the things you're learning. Also, when you miss a day, those reviews just get added on to the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day. So your workload, if you miss any days, just gets harder and harder. So try not to be inconsistent. It's also ineffective under time constraints. If you're studying for the exam tomorrow or next week and just starting, You'll still be able to use the flashcard app, but it just won't have a lot of the same function that it normally would if you were studying for it months in advance. Also, some sections are pretty low yield. A lot of the pre-made decks have a lot of information that's really good and comprehensive, but also has some information that isn't too important. So that's really important for you to discern what you need and what you don't. So now that we're seasoned Anki experts and we're ready to get a ribbon on those flashcards, I want to tell you about some add-ons that you can use to make your Anki experience that much better. Now, I downloaded about 40 from Anking uh, through a YouTube video that I'll link down below. And I'll show you them here, but there are way, way too many for me to talk about in just this video. As you can see, there's this massive list. But some ones I do want to bring your attention to are going to be as follows. So if we go back to our Add Card screen and click the little image occlusion icon up here, you can see that whatever you've copy and pasted or a file from your computer, you can add these little boxes to. So let's hide this and let's hide this. And essentially it will make flashcards for each of those different hidden things. And essentially what you want to do with the flashcard is say what's under the box. So then you have two options down here, hide all guess one or hide one guess one. Essentially the difference is, do you want to hide all the labels? or just the one that you're trying to uncover. So personally, I think it's a little better to use hide all guess one because it just really takes away from uh, the process of elimination that you can do if you have everything else, like, oh, it must be this one then. Now this add-on is really useful for image occlusion, which is hiding part of an image that you could use for an anatomy diagram or maybe a flow chart. And the heart is a great example of where this kind of thing would be useful. 
The other two add-ons that I want to highlight for this video are review heat maps and more deck stats and time left, which you can see at the bottom of this screen right here. The review heat map just shows you exactly how many cards you've been doing per day and gives you this nice little graphic that just makes you feel good. And then it gives you your streak at the bottom, your longest streak, your current streak, and on average how many cards you're doing per day. And then the other add-on, more deck stats and time left, will show you just more stats about how many cards you've done in how many minutes, how long it's taking you per card, your card average per minute, and just all these fun stats uh, for all you data nerds like me. So I hope you're leaving this video with a better sense of how to use Anki and you're ready to step up in your flashcard game. If you like this video, check out my video on how I study for exams in medical school, where I talk about a lot of the resources I use, how I learn, and how I review. And like usual, that's been your daily dose of Medi Sun, and I'll see you in the next video.